All right, guys, it's about time. I did a video on Quinto Canto or V Canto fragrances. Many of you have been asking me to do one. And since I've already done videos on Tiziana Terenzi, and probably you guys don't know, but Quinto Canto is a sister house of Tiziana Terenzi. So all the fragrances are created by Paolo Terenzi, who creates the fragrances for Tiziana Terenzi. So anyway, we're going to talk about the house of Quinto Canto. I've got 11 fragrances here. I'm ranking this list. And I'm also going to mention a, a couple of different discounts uh, that you can take advantage of uh, buying these fragrances. Starting tomorrow, you can get 30% off using the discount code SEBASTIAN30 over at So Avant Garde. But any time of the year, if you visit So Avant Garde to buy fragrances, you can use the discount code SEBASTIAN20. That saves you 20% off. So if you're interested in finding out about Quinto Canto fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about Quinto Canto fragrances. It's an Italian house. Very similar fragrances to Tiziana Trenzi. Some might be kind of maybe a little bit redundant. They do have very similar themes and uh, genres and things like that. But there's definitely stuff that's not different and I've got most of those here that I want to talk to you about uh, that I like. So I've ranked this list. It's the top 11 fragrances from Quinto Canto, not 10 or not 12. Uh, I've got 11 different fragrances, that's why. And of course, as I said, these are sold at Suave Avant Garde. You can take advantage of the discount code 20% off. Uh, it's a Sebastian 20. Any time of the year you want to buy fragrances there on every fragrances that are sold on that website. Or starting tomorrow until Sunday night, you can use the discount code SEBASTIAN30 and it will save you 30% off of these or any fragrances over at So Avant Garde. So if you guys are familiar with Quinta Canto, let me know what uh, fragrances you know from the brand and which are your favorites. Of course, you guys uh, definitely probably know uh, Tiziana Trenzi because their fragrances are sold pretty much everywhere. So we're going to start off with the first fragrance. It is Sigismondo, this one right here. So this one to me, it's the most beautiful uh, kind of golden yellow color, but sadly has ended up at the bottom. And this to me is a 2020 launch. It's considered a woody spicy fragrance and it features notes of Cambodian oud, Italian saffron, musk, Bulgarian rose, Ceylonese cinnamon, Cipriol, Indian oud, vanilla flower, ambergris, and patchouli. There's a lot of stuff going on in the fragrances for Tiziana Terenzi and of course Quinto Canto. They're also all extra de parfum concentration. So the highest concentration of fragrances and these fragrances will last you days and days and days. Well, not literally, but in comparison to, uh, you know, fragrances from the designer's world, the fragrances of uh, Quinto Canto, Tiziana Terenzi are really long lasting fragrances. So this one's at the bottom. It's a woody spicy fragrance and it has some light rosy touches and also some leather touches as well. Definitely there's the idea of a little smokiness in here and then some light sweetness that comes in with a bit of animalic touch. I shouldn't say it's a little bit animalic. It's definitely a lot animalic depending on when I wore it. Sometimes when I spray this stuff on, I can pick out the animalics more and sometimes Sometimes it's less so I kind of prefer it less but in the end it's a very leathery oud fragrance with light touches of you know floral touches of rose there's smokiness and light sweetness in there so I've put it at number 11 you might be a fan of this one but uh, I do enjoy the color of the bottle as you can see it's a really gorgeous color bottle but Sigismondo has ended up at number 11. So moving on to the next fragrance at number 10, it's Curaro or Curaro, this one right here. This one's coming into this kind of a really beautiful bluish um, color. Um, it's actually, what I should say is they're kind of like a velvet, is that what it is, or satin? They're kind of very velvety smooth bottles, so be careful when you spray so it doesn't drip on the, the bottles. They're very soft to the touch, and I like that about these bottles. They're totally different than Tiziana Terenzi bottles. But this is a 2018 launch. It's considered an amber floral fragrance, and I've ended up putting this one here. I like the idea of this one. It has a lot of patchouli, but for some reason I am preferring the other fragrances more. But Curaro features notes of Indian oud, patchouli, red patchouli, caramel, benzoin, Cambodian oud, iris, amorous, cinnamon, vanilla, and orris. Maybe it's because I'm kind of getting bored of oud again. I don't know. I, I'm not sure why. But this definitely has a lot of woods, a lot of oud. There's warmth and spiciness there. There's definitely ambery touches for sure. It becomes ambery. And the whole fragrance is powdery when you're wearing it. But along the way, you'll have some sweet touches. The caramel comes in for sure. Benzoin accentuates the sweetness with its resinous vanillic touches. And then, of course, it's powdery. Powdery, but 
the patchouli adds the uh, you know the uh, earthy layer to the fragrance, the woody base to the fragrance. But once again, it's an oudy fragrance. It's an overdose of ouds because we've got the Indian oud and the Cambodian oud, and it's a little bit animalic. Not necessarily very much. It's a little, but in the end, Curaro has ended up at number ten. And uh, yeah, there's other fragrances that I enjoy from this house much more. And you've probably been watching my channel to know that there's several fragrances from this house that I, you know, recommend quite frequently. And we're going to get those towards the, the top of the list at number one, two, and three. But Curaro is at number 10. So at number nine, we're going with the fragrance Temptatio, this one right here. This is a 2020 launch once again. It's considered a fruity floral fragrance. And I do enjoy fruity floral fragrances, and the house of Tiziana Trenzi has a ton of fruity floral fragrances, and I do enjoy them. This one does remind me a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of uh, other fragrances from Tiziana Trenzi, and I feel like it was a little redundant, so I ranked it here at number nine. It comes in a most beautiful golden color. It's uh, kind of... Um, like uh, gold flakes that are pasted on the, the bottle. So it's a really gorgeous bottle, I think. But because it was a little redundant for me, as far as smell goes, I put it here. It reminds me of another Tiziana Terenzi fragrance, which uh, I couldn't think off the top of my head. I'd have to go back and look. But if you like the idea of a fruity floral fragrance, if you like the, the idea of musk and woods along with the fruits, this is one for you. But it features musk, passion fruit, peach, vanilla, cassis, tonka beans, sandalwood, lemon, oranges, rose, Ilang Ilang patchouli. So it's a great combination of notes, right? It actually smells really, really great. But I'm ranking it here. I do enjoy the other fragrances more. Also because it seems a little redundant and I already have this fragrance from the Tiziana Terenzi house. But for me, if I was to pick this one out before I had a fragrance similar to this from the Tiziana Terenzi house, this would definitely end up at the top of the list because it smells really, really fantastic. And what I like about this is it's also extra strong. It's intense, X-ray de parfum once again. It's perfect to wear something like this in the summertime where you want fragrances to last, but also not to cloy you, like to be too overwhelming, too heavy, and things like that. So I would check this one out if you like the idea of a fruity floral fragrance. This is Temptatio, and it's the ninth fragrance from this house at number nine. Next up, going to the fragrance Lucrethia. I think that's how you say it. This is a floral gourmand amber floral fragrance. You can, you know, put it in this kind of a category. It definitely has gourmand qualities for me because it's coffee and things like that mixed with flowers or it's an amber floral because it eventually becomes ambery when it's drying down. This is a 2016 launch. It features notes of jasmine, vanilla, pear, coffee, cacao, lime blossom, honeysuckle, pink pepper, benzoin, amber, patchouli, cedar. As you know, a lot of the fragrances, in fact, most of the fragrances from uh, the these two houses, Quinto Canto and Tiziana Terenzi, have a lot of notes and you do go on an adventure going through all these different things with the fragrances, you know, because they're very complex fragrances and very long lasting because they are also ex de parfum, so a lot of perfume oils. This one to me, it's an overdose of white flowers meshed with vanilla touches and of course the coffee and cacao. For me, I think this is what's running the show with a little bit of a fruitiness from the pear thrown in and then there's additional flowers that come in as well with a little bit of spice and then eventually it becomes you know, resinous, ambery and woody with earthy patchouli. I think it's a really great fragrance. It's reminding me of something I smelled before, not necessarily from Tiziana Terenzi. I can't figure it out. Uh, but I think it's definitely a great fragrance if you like the idea of a floral gourmand or an amber floral fragrance with woody touches. For sure, this is one that would satisfy you. It also seems just a little bit non necessarily as niche as uh, other fragrances are, but I like the, the way it smells. I like the combination of the white flowers with the vanilla and the pear and the coffee and the cacao. So it's quite delicious. So this is Lucrezia and that's number eight. All right, up next, going to the fragrance Cashmere, this one right here. So there are a lot of the fragrances I'm gonna to talk to you about today will come in a bottle like this. They're the kind of the navy blue bottles that uh, are traditional for this house. I kind of like the colorful bottles a lot. But this is a 2015 launch. It's actually considered an amber woody fragrance. And it features notes of copaiba balm, cashmere, amber, vanilla, sandalwood, ylang ylang, patchouli, geranium, labdanum, musk, and vetiver. For me, this is an amber fragrance with an overdose of patchouli. I love this. I love the way it smells. It does remind me of another fragrance that's here, which is ranked higher. That's why this one's ranked a little lower. So for me, it seems like 
redundant from the same collection a little bit, but it actually smells really great. And the fact that it lasts and lasts and lasts even better. For me, it's all about the balsamic note of copaiba balm along with the amber. And then it has the cashmere note, but creates the kind of a musky, woody characteristic to the fragrance. But there's the vanilla as well. So the copaiba balm, cashmere, amber, vanilla, and then of course, lots of patchouli here. So if you like the idea of a amber fragrance with, you know, the patchouli intensity here with some sweet touches and musks and woods and you know ambers and uh, balms or balsamic notes and this is the one for you it is very very long lasting i like that about this fragrance but i felt like it was just a little too similar to another fragrance that i've ranked at the top so I'm putting it here at number seven. But I think if I discovered cashmere before I discovered the other fragrance, this might have ended up at the number one spot. And the other fragrance I've had in my collection for so long, and I've recommended it over and over again in different videos. So that's why I'm ranking cashmere here at number seven. All right, next one is called Ensis. It's a green floral fragrance, and I feel like this Ensis is green uh, spring in a bottle. If you like the idea of greens, lush, foresty, gardens, shrubs, and the idea of spring greens, this is definitely one that you should definitely check out because I think it smells fantastic. And again, it's a it's a green fragrance, it's mostly fresh, and it's got that kind of great longevity because it's a fragrance created by Paolo Terenzi for Quinto Canto, and it's coming in X-ray de parfum concentration. So it's a long lasting fragrance when it goes into the fresh direction, but it has loads of leaves, there's black currant here, metallic notes, musk, pansy, bergamot, lily of the valley. So if you're into the idea of fragrances like um, Lombardon Low or any kind of green, lush green forest garden shrubs kind of with light fruitiness and some floral notes thrown in. This is one that you could, you got to check out. There's citruses here. There's the green floral touch of the lily of the valley. And then of course the pansy note. And it does have a bit of metallic edge for sure. They mention it along with musk. So this is a great fragrance. I've actually spoken about this one quite a bit on the channel. I do think that it does hint a little bit at Lombard on Low. They're not similar whatsoever. I think it's the idea more than uh, the actual fragrance itself seeming similar but uh, yeah it's a great spring fragrance and I think we are now in spring uh, this one will be a great fragrance in fact I think this is also a great fragrance for summer or if you're in the winter time and you want that whole idea of spring greens uh, definitely Ensis would be one for you to try so Ensis is number six all right the next fragrance we're going to talk about is Strychnina this one right here in a beautiful red bottle and Strychnina I would consider a sweet fruity gourmand really a great idea right a fruity gourmand. I love gourmand fragrances and this one kind of reminds me uh, of some other fragrances from uh, Tiziana Terenzi, but it kind of goes into other directions and it creates more of a gourmand effect because it has like lots of vanilla and brown sugar here as a note. So it's a 2017 launch. It features notes of raspberry, passion fruit, peaches, cassis. So those are all the fruits. We've also got brown sugar, vanilla pods, and those are like where the gourmand and the delicious gourmand ambery notes come in. And we've got lots of flowers of magnolia, ylang ylang, lemons, musk, and bergamot. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Here, and I feel like the brown sugar and the vanilla in contrast with the, the the fruity notes and the flowers is what's really running the show here with a little bit of a citrusy edge as well and of course some muskiness. This is quite delicious. You know, I would say this is also kind of on the fresh side for a gourmand because, you know, I feel like the, uh, the, the fruits are all very fresh and the flowers are all very fresh. It's just the brown sugar and the vanilla that's in here. It's creating the more gourmand effect, uh, adding to the, you know, gourmand touches. But I think you can totally get away with wearing this in the summertime if you like the idea of a very complex, fruity, uh, sweet gourmand fragrance. And, you know, I would also call this a fruity floral, amber floral, fruity floral. It's all these different styles that's in here, but very complex, very fruity, very floral and sweet and ambery and uh, gourmand at the same time. So Strychnina is at number five. All right, up next, we're going with the fragrance Ricina. I think it's Ricina. I think that's how you say it in Italy. Ricina or Ricina? Ricina, I think. It's a fruity floral fragrance from 2018. Here we go with fruity floral again. Again, Tiziana Trenzi or Paolo Trenzi really does really great fruity floral fragrances and going into more amber floral and into kind of like gourmand floral, fruity floral direction. This to me is more fresh and it's super fantastic smelling. Really love it. And this one actually to me is also very perfect 
perfect for summertime heat because it's a lot of freshness here. We've got peony, we've got orange blossom, bergamot, peach, oak moss, iris, oud, jasmine, red plums, sandalwood, and patchouli. For me, it's all about the top notes and its freshness. The peony flower has a bit of rosiness, orange blossom with its citrus floral, you know, white floral touches, lots of juicy bergamot here, peaches for that kind of fruitiness with oak moss giving it some depth in the base, iris to give it some powdery touches. It does get powdery for sure. And then we've got even more fruits of red plums and eventually it becomes oody, sandalwoody, and earthy woody with the patchouli there. It doesn't, I, I feel like what's really driving the, the show are the top and the heart notes, the flowers and the citruses and the fruits. And you know, eventually it does get a little more deep because it is settling to kind of oody, woody, and uh, earthy woody but this is so good. This is a really, really great fragrance. Really would love to wear this when it's really, really hot outside because it has its strength, it has its intensity, but it's all very fresh, fruity, and floral. Anyway, Ricina is net number four. And then this one, guys, this one is so super fantastic. This is called Chikuta, is that how you say it? Sikuta, I think it's Chikuta. This is a sweet floral rose fragrance and it was launched in 2016. I haven't really smelled a pure uber rosy fragrance from the house of uh, Tiziana Terenzi. There is the gold rose oud, which is about rose and oud, but I just haven't really smelled anything that's just all about rose. And this fragrance, Chikuta, I think Chichuta or Chik uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time with the name, pays tribute to the rose and it's all about roses in a long, long lasting way. So 2016 launch, it features notes of Rose Bulgaria, Rose Absolute, Clementine, Vanilla, Birchwood, Musk, Ambergris, Oranges, Bergamot, and Coriander. The combination is so, so great. If you like the idea of a very long lasting rose, jammy, also fresh, a bit green, very musky, lightly animalic, not very much. I think the Ambergris is adding a little bit of animalic something under there and I do notice that Terenzi uses a lot of amber green, a lot of his fragrances. It does add that kind of light animalic edge. This also has a bit of smokiness from the birch but musky and very juicy citrusy altogether. This is a really really great rose fragrance. The rose in here, the two kinds of rose, the rose bulgaria and rose absoluto or assoluto are so so great. It's just an overdose of rose and everything else is just supporting this fragrance and pushing the rose along for you to experience and smell and smell really great. I think roses, if you like the idea of roses, you got to get your nose on Chikuta or Chichuta from uh, Quinto Canto and that is at number three. So going to number two and this is one of the fragrances I've spoken a lot about. It's Mirabile, this one right here. So Mirabile is a 2015 launch and it's considered an amber vanilla fragrance or an amber fragrance. In the end, it's an overdose of amber with vanilla, lots of amber, but we've got lots of vanilla here with tonka beans, a papanax, there's malt note, there's milk note, there's rum note, there's lavender, there's bushu. But man, the combination is so good. It's a it's like in your face vanilla with an ambery base. A papanax is like a sweet resin similar to myrrh. In fact, I think it, it is myrrh. And you've got lactonic touches along the way, lightly boozy, a bit of aromatic, some floral touches. And then that malt note comes in to accentuate and give it a bit of a gourmand edge to the fragrance. Very delicious. If you like vanilla, if you like the idea of vanilla, it's lots of vanilla with a milky edge to it and ambery dry down. This is one that you gotta check out. It's Mirabile from uh, Quinto Canto. And uh, if you've been watching my channel, I've recommended that one quite a bit. Uh, in different uh, videos. And then last but not least, we're ending at number one with Mea Culpa. Really, really great fragrance. Vanilla at number two, patchouli is at number one, basically my notes ranking. My number one favorite note is patchouli. Vanilla is my number two favorite note. Mea Culpa I've had for a while and I really enjoyed. It's kind of in the line of something like Psychedelic, Reminiscence Patchouli, uh, Lenaritz Patchouli, and all those kind of like chocolate cakey patchouli fragrances. I would call this an earthy woody fragrance. It's 2015 launch, features notes of patchouli, benzoin, vanilla, incense, sand, birch, slate. Those are the notes that they have mentioned here. For me, what creates 
the chocolate cakiness. And I wouldn't call this a gourmand because it's not gourmand notes. We basically have benzoin and vanilla, which kind of creates the ambery touches. And when you have these notes mixed in with that earthy, woody patchouli, it creates a kind of a chocolate cakey effect. Here we've got it in full in your face, lots of that patchouli. But along the way, you have some unique things happening. You've got a little bit of incense thrown in. So it gets a little bit smoky. It gets a little spicy, woody, earthy, and powdery at the same time. And don't forget the vanilla edge to this fragrance and the ambery edge with the benzoin and vanilla. So good. This is Mea Culpa and that is at number one. And that's the list for you guys. Top 11 Quinto Canto fragrances. Do you say Vicanto or Quinto Canto? It's an Italian brand, so we're going to have to go with Quinto Canto, but most people probably say, uh, say Vicanto. Uh, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you fa uh, do you, is one of these fragrances one of your favorite fragrances? Are there others that you like from the brand? Let me know. Put a comment down below. And also, don't forget to take advantage of this discount code. It's Sebastian30 starting tomorrow until Sunday. Saves you 30% off of all of the fragrances that I talked about here today or any fragrance on So Avant Garde. Any, else, any other time of the year, it's 20% off with the code Sebastian20. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.